introducing the California ELD standards, which were revised in November 2012 in order to align to the California Common Core standards. These are the elements that can be found within the California ELD standards. First, there's an overview and proficiency level descriptors document. It is in this document where you could find out more about the alignment to the California state standards. You could read about the proficiency level descriptors and learn about the structure of the grade level standards. Then there are the actual grade level ELD standards in two sections. Finally, there are four appendices and a glossary of key terms. All of these elements can be found on the California Department of Education website or you can just search California ELD standards. Here we have an overview of the proficiency level descriptors. These PLDs describe student knowledge, skills, and abilities across a continuum. These descriptors are meant to guide teachers in providing ELs with targeted instruction in ELD as well as differentiated instruction in academic content areas. The organization of the PLDs represents English language development as a continuum of increasing proficiency in language learning and use, starting with native language and competencies students possess when they enter school. So basically they're not empty vessels, they come to school possessing a wide range of competencies in their own native language. The PLDs conclude with lifelong language learning. Once the students have exited the bridging level, they will still continue their ongoing learning of English. Here we see the three stages of ELD, emerging, expanding, and bridging. Each with an early stage and exit stage. The PLDs also emphasize that ELs are capable of high-level thinking and can engage in complex, cognitively demanding social and academic activities requiring language as long as they are provided appropriate linguistic support. For example, a student at the emerging level may need substantial support, a student at the expanding level may need moderate support, and a student at the bridging level may need light support. The amount of scaffolding really just depends on the familiarity and complexity of the task. Let's take a closer look at the three stages of ELD. The students at the emerging level are typically progressing very quickly. They're learning English for immediate needs. They're developing their BICs. They're beginning to understand academic vocabulary, yet have limited reading, writing, speaking, and listening skills. Students at the expanding level are challenged to increase their English skills in more contexts and learn a greater variety of vocabulary and linguistic structure. Students at the bridging level transition to full engagement in grade level academic tasks and activities. They can communicate effectively with various audiences on a wide range of familiar and new topics to meet the academic demands in a variety of disciplines. This bridge eludes to that transition into grade level academic tasks. The descriptors for each proficiency level are detailed across three modes of communication, and two dimensions of knowledge of language. The three modes of communication are collaborative, interpretive, and productive. Collaborative is when the students are engaging in dialogue with others. Interpretive is the comprehension and analysis of written and spoken texts. What do they understand? Productive is the creation of oral presentations and written texts. What can they produce? So we want students to participate in content area conversations using that academic language. We want them to understand grade level text and produce and sustain interactions. We also want them to write and express ideas for social and academic demands. The PLDs are also detailed across two dimensions of knowledge of language, metalinguistic awareness and accuracy of production. Metalinguistic awareness is the extent of language awareness and self-monitoring students have at a level. Accuracy of production is the extent of accuracy in production ELs can be expected to exhibit at that level. So we want students to unpack meaning in written and oral texts that they encounter across the disciplines. 
We want them to understand how English is structured and organized. We want them to build awareness about language resources, maybe tapping into their primary language and looking at cognates. We want them to make informed choices about how to use language appropriately based on the topic, the discipline, the purpose, the audience, the task, when producing oral and written texts. And we also want them to understand how meaning is made through language choice. So let's review the organization of the PLDs. The students come in with native language abilities. They progress through the three stages of ELD, emerging, expanding, and bridging, and conclude with lifelong language learning. Now I have to admit that things are going to be a little bit messy as we transition into the new ELD standards. And that's because we're still working with the old CELT scores, at least until the new LPAC assessment comes out. Now at the risk of oversimplifying this, because it's not a clear cut alignment, we might be able to look at the ELD 1s and 2s as the students at the emerging level, the ELD 3s from the CELT as the students at the expanding level, and the ELD 4s and 5s as the students at the bridging level. Okay, so now let's look at the actual grade level ELD standards. If you look at the top, you'll see Section 1 and Section 2. Section 1 is generally consistent across all grades. It contains a goal, which is what teachers want for their ELs, critical principles, which further elaborates on that goal and explains how these ELD standards will fulfill that, then at the bottom, you'll see an at-a-glance overview, which are similar to the Common Core Anchor Standards because it's all of the standards, but just an at-a-glance overview. Section 2 is where you'll find your actual grade-level ELD standards. Section 2 is entitled Elaboration on Critical Principles. There are three parts. Part 1, Interacting in Meaningful Ways, which I like to think of as the cool colors. Part two, learning about how English works, which I like to think of as the warm colors. And then part three, using foundational literacy skills. There are 12 standards in part one. There are seven standards in part two. There are no standards in part three. It's just provided separately in order to highlight for teachers the potential need for instruction for their ELs and foundational literacy skills. In part one, students are interacting in meaningful ways. Part one presents the grade level ELD standards that set expectations for English learners to participate in meaningful, relevant, and intellectually challenging ways in various contexts and disciplines in three modes of communication. Those three modes of communication are collaborative, interpretive, and productive. When students are collaborating, they're engaging in dialogue with others. They're interacting through writing. They're adapting language choices. They're offering opinions and negotiating, and they're exchanging information and ideas. Within the interpretive standards, students are analyzing language choices. They're evaluating their language choices and reading closely and listening actively. It's the comprehension and analysis of written and spoken text. Within the productive standards, students are presenting, they're supporting their opinions, they're selecting and applying the language, and they're composing, they're writing. It's the creation of oral presentations and written texts. Part two is organized into the following language processes, structuring cohesive texts, expanding and enriching ideas, and connecting and condensing ideas. Within the two standards under Structuring Cohesive Text, students are understanding text structure and organization based on purpose, text, type, and discipline. And they're understanding cohesion and how language resources across a text contribute to the ways a text unfolds and flows. When they're expanding and enriching ideas, they're using verbs and verb phrases using noun and noun phrases, and modifying to add details. When they are connecting and condensing ideas, 
They're connecting ideas within sentences by combining clauses. They're condensing ideas within sentences using a variety of language resources. So there you have it. Those are the ELD standards. Part one, the cool colors have to do with interacting in meaningful ways. And part two, the warm colors have to do with learning about how English works. There are 19 standards in all. Last but not least, I would like to show you how to write an actual grade level ELD standard. If you look at this example, this example comes from grade three. Then we need to identify which part. Part one, was it in the cool colors, interacting in meaningful ways? Or was it in part two, the warm colors, learning about how English works? For this example, my standard is in part one, the cool colors, interacting in meaningful ways. Then we need to say under which standard. Was it standard A, B, or C? Well, if I was in part one, you would say which communicative mode? A, collaborative, B, interpretive, or C, productive? But if I was in part two, you would need to say which language processes? A, structuring cohesive text, B, expanding and enriching ideas, or C, connecting and condensing ideas? So for this example, I was in A, collaborative mode. Then you can actually write the standard number two. Now we can't just say standard two because there's a standard two in part one and a standard two in part two. So then last but not least, you can write um, emerging, expanding, or bridging if you want to identify the PLD. So again, for this example, we have grade three, part one, a for collaborative communicative mode, standard two, expanding. But if you look at the bottom, it could also be written like this. You don't have to say GR for grade. You could just write 3.1, point A, point two, point expanding. Or if you're in a book where everything's third grade, you could just eliminate the three in the beginning and just write one for part one, A, point two, point expanding. So that's third grade, part one, collaborative mode, standard two, expanding. I know it's a little bit complicated because it's new, but I think just like everything else in our teaching world, it will just get easier with time.